thank you for having me. It's my first time in New Zealand and Christchurch, so I'm totally jet-lagged. Um, if I skip some slides or anything happens, it's because of the jet lag. Um, everybody, I just put the microphone on this. Everybody already saw my name, so let's get started. Uh, everyone, or has anyone been on the workshop on Machine Learning 101 today in the morning? Okay, you guys can just skip the first part. Uh, and the talk just a few minutes ago, anyone listen to the, to the talk? Um, yeah, skip the first part here nearly. Um, so I'm just, just going to start. So what we do is we try to help uh, shops, mainly fashion and furniture, to increase their conversion by analyzing images, putting it together with the behavior of the customer, and trying to predict what the customer wants to buy or what he wants to buy it for. That's why this amazing slogan we have here, understanding what the customer is looking at, uh, to understand what the customer is looking for, it it's, it's just nails it. It's, it's my invention. Um, nearly explains it all. So remember it at the end of the, of the, the slides, you're going to say, yeah, he was right. Skip to the next one. Just as everyone already said, you have a lot of data that comes in in some creepy AI, and then you have your products coming out of it. But how do you learn that out of the image? If you had been to the, to the machine learning 101 in the morning, you would know. So we'll just go it again. You have to create your data set. That was one part of the, the, the round table before again. Last week, someone told me and said, your data set is your gold. And that's not right. The data set is like the tools you need to dig for gold. Um, because this is one of the most complicated parts. You have to have your taxonomy, you have to know beforehand what you want, what you want to train. If you have a lot of dirt in there, you're not going to get your gold out. So, yeah, the fonts didn't load. So, um, next part is the object objectives and the loss function. That's why they're in red. Um, it's important that you give, come on. It's important that you give your, your tool um, an objective, something that you want him to accomplish. And the last function is mainly there that you define how hard you're going to slap him if it doesn't do what you want him to. And just to, because I listened, I, I hear that already three times today. Um, Open source tools, there are Keras, DeepLearn 4J, TensorFlow. When we started doing this, that was 2012, way at the beginning. There weren't all of these tools, so we had to create our own. And even we are thinking about switching to Keras, because you can use Keras with TensorFlow. TensorFlow is from Google. They have a massive amount of people working there. And it works quite good. The other things are GPU and RAM, that helps you. But you don't have to, to spend $10,000 to get a good machine. Something around 500 to 600 and you can start, yeah, just get started with it. <clears throat> After you get your data set, trained on the data set, you want him to predict or extract features. You want something that the data is going to give back to you. So you gave him input, you gave him the, what he has to do, and at the end you have an output, and the output can be some categorizations, there can be some features, and a lot of things. It depends on what you want to do afterwards. So what's important on the image? That's the other question you have to answer. It's not saying there's a cat or there's a dog, it's why should I care if there's a cat or a dog on the image? Using this part that's like a security camera for surveillance, you don't want to always analyze the whole image. That, that costs a lot of memory, that costs money, that costs all of resources you have. You don't want it. So <clears throat> get the image, try to analyze the parts, detect what has been changed, extract the changes in the image, and just analyze this part. So we have the first part, 
which is analyzing, training the system, getting something to predict. And now we're throwing something new inside of it. But why? Because you don't want your surveillance camera to wake you up at four in the morning just because a cat, a dog, or a fox, anything comes in front of your door. <clears throat> so what you need to do? Understand what's happening. How do you do it? Back to the other thing. You extract the changes of the image. This part here is no machine learning. It's computer vision. So there's no deep learning stuff, no neural nets. It's just, just template matching. You have one image, put the other one on top. What's changed, that's the change. And then you put it into your just learned system. You just got a few minutes ago. You created it, and it says, oh, there's a person. It's a man. He has a bag. And now you make your decisions on what you want to do with this information. Should you alert someone, say, hey, that's a terrorist? Or just keep an eye on him, ignore him? Those are the questions that the system is not going to answer to you. It's just helping you to create your decisions. But we don't do security cameras, so that's why <clears throat> we have another question. What happens if I don't have changes if I don't have a video, if I don't have history of what's happening once one step after the other one, and why is this important? Because we come from the e-commerce and we have, we're analyzing still images, we're looking at product images, and this is something that typical image from one of our customers and you have a lot of information about it. <clears throat> I just didn't put all the information on it, but that's just one part and someone gonna look some, some of you guys will say, oh, yeah, nice looking woman. Others say, that's a nice jacket. Others say, no. <laughs> <laughs> so to explain it all a bit further, I'm going to tell you a short story about Lily. I just came up with this name. There is no, I don't know anyone with that name. But <clears throat> So she's, She's at the first time she got to this shop. This is a customer, this is a real life. I got the data directly from the, this customer. Um, she's, it's the first time she got to this shop. She wants to have a dress. <clears throat> she's looking around and this is the first dress she got. I said, oh yeah, as you can see here is a recommendation. This is German for similar items. <clears throat> Anyone speaks German here? So many? What are you guys doing here? This is, this is the other side of the world. Um, so we got this, this image. We extract some readable features. We have some other features we extract there also. Said, so, okay, there are straps on it. You can see it over here. Um, it's a bright blue and patterned and short dress. And Lily says, yeah, but that's not what I want. So she goes to the next one. And you see here another dress. And you can see on this side, dress becomes a little bit darker. Um, straps, hmm, no. She has something like sleeveless. So it gets cut off. So we're, what we're doing here is we're extracting information from the image, combining it to whatever Lily is doing now, and trying to understand where she's heading for. So as you look here, we have different recommendations, but they all have flowers. They all have, they're sleeveless and they're short, and we see the third. There have been like four others, but I just make three, four, uh, three slides. As you can see, dress becomes bigger, sleeves becomes bigger, sleeveless becomes bigger, and it's blue, and all the dresses here are now blue with flowers and sleeveless. So the system is predicting summer. She's going to summer. She might be going to a vacation. Should be something cool, bright, flowery, and Lily also just bought it. Uh, I know it because we had the checkout of that. And a month later, she comes back from vacation. I don't know. I don't know if she came back from vacation. I just know a month later, we saw her cookie saying hello in the shop again. This is a typical recommendation you would get if you go on history. What happened just like a month ago? She bought a dress. I don't know. There's no resemblance between those two. And if you Insanity check, you would say, yeah, no, flowers, that's not the tool. So we start, we create our system in a way that we said, you have to predict what the person wants now for the future, and you forget about the past 
most of the times, so that you st um, try to predict where the person is heading for, just like in the first sentence. <clears throat> That's what we get here. Looks a bit closer than the flowery parts here. So Liddy goes there, again, shopping, wanting to spend all her money on dresses. And you can see dresses, shorts, sleeveless. Oh, again, sleeveless. But this time, our system starts also saying, what can I combine with it? That's somewhere around here. I didn't get the, the slide to go get down. <clears throat> uh, just looking at the time. Again, Lily gets to the next dress, can recommend something to wear to the dress. We see what she wants, and we see business and elegant. And this is where, we, where the system predicts that the person is going to. So we're extracting what he's seeing. We extract, we're getting information where the person is going to, to try to understand where the person is heading for. By knowing that, it's better than, or it, it helps us to, to funnel all the products, most of our customers have 10 to a, 10 thousands to a million of products, and no one wants to pen, spend their lifetime searching for a dress. They want to go there. If they don't find it at the beginning, they're just gone. It's like when you're looking on Google and you type something in, you're not going to page 15 on Google to see if you find any results. It just doesn't happen. At least I don't do it. <laughs> <clears throat> So just to put it all together, I think this explains it quite good. We want to predict what the customer wants and not what he wanted. So we're not looking for the history of what he did before. What we're trying is predict the future. That's quite insane. We shouldn't, I shouldn't say that, but it's all the marketing talk and I'm CTO, so. Um, but this works. So if I just go the slides back, this is a real running and working customer. It's called, they're called Arze. That's a French company, but there's, I think they sell the most in Germany. And those, this is another, I don't know, here I, in New Zealand, you guys know Esprit? No. Yes? OK. This is Esprit, but in Germany. And what they're doing is recommending something you can wear to the pants. If it's sold out, you can see, um, see alternatives. And they're highlighting things that you might like while you're browsing. So you don't have to look at everything, just with the system. Things that you might like, OK, we can discuss about ethical things, is you might not be seeing everything, so you you're getting like pushed in one direction, and everybody's going to look alike in a few years. This is not going to happen. This is just a, the, the sales and marketing part. Just to, I just put it there to, to show it works. It's not just uh, some academic stuff. It's not the paper. It's we earn money with that, and our customers earn more money. And I normally hear that we should get more money for what we do. Those are some customers um, that we deliver a system in Germany, and must be something around about 18 countries where they're using it. But most of them, the headquarters are in Germany, and I guess most of you guys have never heard about them. It's like, have you ever heard about Otto? If you've been in Germany, maybe. It's like, when you're in Germany, it's like, they're huge. That's like Amazon. And if you go out of Germany, it's like, I have never heard of it. I've just been in San Francisco, and I was bragging around and saying, yeah, and we got Otto. And they're like, um, did you know Nordstorm? I said, yeah, I know them, but Otto is nearly the same size. Yeah, but they're in Germany. <laughs> uh, for Americans, Germany, uh, it's only, you have to be in the US to have it as a, then you can brag about it. Here is like, yeah, we have tw no, it's 25 people now, and our office moved from San Francisco to, to New York, and our headquarters is in Germany, Hamburg. And partnering with, yeah, NVIDIA, as you might have heard, all the GPUs and the graphic cards, and really important, we, it helps us not to spend too much money. 
this is my small daughter. This is my part. This is, this is Daniel, the guy who, hey, why did you do that? No, he has a different, uh, the fun part, just fun fact, just to break the ice. Um, both kids were born in just 24 hours of difference. So the company had two years ago, both bosses weren't there. Um, <laughs> if you guys have questions, this is me. You can find me on LinkedIn, you can send me emails, you can call me if you're in Germany. Not if you're in New Zealand because it's quite late. <laughs> it's like five in the morning now. And that's it. All right, am I good in at time? Yeah. Um, you're, you're very good, you've got 19 minutes. Yeah, so questions. I rather like questions than presenting stuff. Let's put something. Cool here. Hands up, questions. I just heard that people in New Zealand don't like to put their hands up. <laughs> they don't. Uh, just way in the back. Scream. Be because images are a uh, universal language. You don't have to create a system for Japanese, for Chinese, for Russian, for German, for English. Looking at the image, doesn't matter which country you come from, you understand it. And you extract a lot of information that you don't have textual-wise. Because when you're writing a text, you're writing for... Um, if, if your shop is selling street style for younger people, you're writing differently than if you're selling the same sneakers to someone who's older. And so this is already a big difference, even though the customer is seeing the same thing. And you can see... If you're extracting information from the image, you're already finding more information than has been described. No one's going to write a full page on description while you have so many dimensions extracting. You have the color, the perceptive color, you have the shape, you have um, smooth facts out of it. Is it sexy? Is it like eleg elegant? Whatever. Um, and, you have, and you can take all the, those features and try to put them into human readable things so you can stick it into your database and use it as social media tags, hashtags, or whatever. Nice. Um, we do actually have an app, the slido.com website. Um, so oh. some of the questions on there. Um, if I'm selling online, oh, how do you think we should get started with increasing conversion using AI? Assuming we're doing everything else well. Don't use AI. Just keep on, the, on, on doing what you're doing or do an A-B test, see if you're making more money and stick to what you're doing to create more money. Uh, that's what we normally do when we have customers. We just go there and say, okay, uh, month free. No, we don't do that. We would say <laughs> you, 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 can, you can cancel the contract inside of the first three months or else you have a 24-month contract and do an A-B test. And if you see that the conversion got higher and you have so much more conversion that you can pay and afford the license, they, they stick to it. And we haven't lost a customer until now. So I guess that's OK. OK, done. Is there a recommended length of time to train a system? Recommended? Length of time. Yeah, it's your patience. <laughs> so if you if you're at the office and you throw your system on to start learning and you just go home and come back on Monday, then I would say it's three days. If you if your boss is just asking you to deliver something random, um, it's like five minutes. But normally you should. You sh but, but the honest uh, answer is you should never. Stop training after five iterations. Epochs. It's you. You should. A good hint: if you're doing deep learning on images, is looking at the first layer filters. If they look to, if they look crispy, I don't have an image for that. But you can see edges. If you can see that there's edges and not just like a broken TV, then you're heading for the right thing, and you should continue it. You can always. If you, if you have the feeling that your network is going to get better, then just let it run. But every time it, it gets better, just make a snap, save it, work on that, and just let your, your computer running. Uh, 
okay, if you have to pay the, the, the electric bill, then you shouldn't do it because they, they consume a lot. Nice. <laughs> How do you train a system that changes often? <laughs> you train them often. Uh, no, um, the best idea I would do, uh, the best thing to do is you train one system and you do the, the use your old system to, to train until you, you have the feeling, or how do you say it? Um, what do you say? Fine tuning, yeah, that's what people. Uh, what, what you should do is say it in German, and then the other people <laughs> they, they who said they spoke German, <laughs> now's your chance. They're not so jet lagged as I am. Yeah. But, <laughs> no, no. Uh, what you do is you, 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 you get just a running network, you throw your data in, work with it until you think that you could improve it by training it completely new because. If you want to have a really, really good system, you, you should do the back propagation the whole way back. And not just cutting some layers, putting new layers and doing that, or taking just the, the last layer and having a new output. That will help you for a while, but after a while, if you want to really impress your, your, the people you want to show it, you should start at least after a while when your data set increased a lot or when you have new, a lot of new categories or not all new features you want to extract then you should train it again, but not every day. Cool. Uh, a couple of questions on this, actually. How are you deciding what the customer likes? Do you use things like mouse hover or, you know, clicks to work out? Um, what we use is the clicks. So exactly like the path from she looked at this dress and then she goes back to, to the overview page and then she looks at the next dress. Now we're combining all the information we got from this dress with the, com with the <coughs> dress she just got before. And, and we're continuing and continuing and seeing, combining clicks and image information. Did I answer it? Yeah. Does your app also say yeah and checked or closed? <laughs> yeah, it's all good. Um, which kind of recommendation algorithm are you using? User-based or item-based? And... Mm -hmm. I don't want to repeat myself, so okay, both, let, yep, both. done. Um, uh, is there any specific algorithm you use to detect customer future preference? Yes, but it's patented, so I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Or, or you just pay license, that's no problem. <laughs> uh, the biggest challenges engineering or research problems? <coughs> engineering or research? Um, none of both. The biggest problem is finding people to do the dirty work <laughs> of creating this part. So if you don't have the data and if the data isn't clean it doesn't matter how good you are in math or how good you can engineer any system, you're not going to get anything out of it. <coughs> what do you mean by data? Do you mean the properties of the, of the pictures, of the parts of the picture? If you're, if you're working with images, then it's, let's say you want to you wanna become our, our concurrent, how do you say that? A competitor. competitor. So um, then you, you start by, OK, I want to understand if it's an address, if it's jeans, if it's a t-shirt, if it's a jacket and whatever. And so you have to have a data set which has all those groups and there should never be a jeans inside of your group which you label dresses. If that happens, it's just gonna be, if it's just once of a million, no problem. If it's one of 10, then you have 10% of error in it and you're gonna destroy all your system. Cool. How do you... No. Um, we're, we're doing it, uh, I was just thinking again, and the, the workshop today in the morning, he told that Netflix does it, and we also have a team of poor people sitting there and looking at him and just, yes, it's a jeans. 
Yes, it's a ripped jeans. Yes, it's blue. Now, uh, the system is it's making a, a suggestion, so every time we start with something totally new, like uh, a few weeks ago, we started trying to understand bicycles in a, in a cool way. And then you have those people sitting there and saying, yeah, that's a BMX. Yeah, that's a mountain bike. This is a racing. Uh, and saying the color of it and what type of wheels they have. It's really annoying. And I do it myself. So I'm also part of those poor people sitting there. But I'm sitting at the couch. My wife is watching a movie. And I'm like, click, click, <laughs> click. <laughs> but for me, it's, it's important because I have to understand what, what the people are doing and what I expect the system to give back to me. So if I just throw it to a mechanical Turk to do it and I get back, I have no idea about the feedback, if the people did their job good or not. And then I'm training, training, training. And after a month, I look at my data and see, oh, yeah, one of those mechanical Turks, they were falling asleep and they were jet lagged in New Zealand and they were putting all the wrong dresses. <laughs> all righty. Um, is there any validation that you've implemented to stop bots selecting the data and giving you wrong input? Yeah, I select the people who are giving me the information in the company for the images myself. On the shop, the bots don't do the checkout. So they're not spending money. What we're doing is, if it's just a bot randomly running around, they're not predicting. All right, let me answer that in a different way. The information that the person is doing here, what Lily is doing is not going to be general. So we're not learning for the, for, in, for the masses so that when Mary comes around, she's not going to get the predictions from Lily. She's going to get her own predictions. So this is not in a loop getting back. And if a bot comes, giving, it, giving trash back. All righty. Um, believe it or not, that clock is wrong. Um, it is the wrong version of AI. It actually, it actually stopped halfway through your session. It knew. All righty. Was it so boring that the clock <laughs> fell asleep? Yeah. No, no. It knew what the future was. Digital. Um, look, thank, thank you, Sebastian. We thank you very gift. much.